Welcome everyone to our live Q&A of the Ask the Expert series. I'm Heidi Liu, and I'm the Strategic Partnerships Manager at Supermove. We're on a mission to make moving simple for everyone with the moving software that brings your whole team from your sales to operation, dispatch to coordinators, all on one system. And today I'm joined by Laura McComb, co-founder of North Star Moving Company, and look forward to talking about how to deal with rogue movers. A brief bio about Laura, she has been consistently honored with leadership awards, including Entrepreneur of the Year 2019 by the Los Angeles Business Journal, Businesswoman of the Decade, Philanthropist of the Year, and One Trailblazer of the Year, which is awesome. There's not enough women leaders in this industry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank prior you. to co-founding North Star Moving with her partner 20 over 25 years ago, Laura, has, Laura was a lawyer and worked on... Um, you know, worked in marketing for Fortune 500 companies, bringing a very knowledgeable and unique perspective on how to stand up to rogue movers. In December 2021, North Star Moving won its trademark infringement lawsuit against King David Van Lines and its operators, and a federal judge awarded North Star Moving $13 million. We're here today to learn from you how to deal with those rogue movers and get the results that you did. I'll start off by asking questions that were submitted during registration and okay. open it up to questions from the audience. So to kick it off, um, yeah, tell us if there's any things I missed in your bio, feel free to fill that in, but tell us more <laughs> about your story. How did you get into the industry and what's what's kept you in it? Uh, well, anybody who's in the moving industry knows that, that it's, it's a fascinating industry because it's it's so challenging and it's and it's fun, <laughs> but uh, what got me into it originally was I wanted to do something that was service oriented. I'd always been, you know, I had worked for Atari and marketing in its infancy. I'd worked for Intel in the legal department. I had um, worked for inventors protecting their intellectual property rights. I had, um, I had done a lot of, I had taught computer programming and mathematics. So I'd done a lot of different things, but I really wanted to start something on my own and have my own business. and. Uh, I really wanted something that was completely service oriented. And I felt like at that time, what was really lacking in the industry for people was a, a service in the moving industry. And so um, people, I think, too often think of movers, they think of somebody who's going to rip them off. And, you know, movers have a really bad reputation. So I wanted to change that. And I wanted to give mostly for for the consumer uh, i wanted to have have them have the feeling that uh they were actually taken care of because it's an extremely stressful time of life so you know, i got my degree from berkeley and my undergraduate degree is in cognitive neurological psychology and so what that talks about some of the things it talks about is big stressing events and one of the big stressing events is moving yeah and it's it's right up there in the top five and it's always accompanied by another stressor like you don't just move you either move because you're changing a job or you're you know i don't need to tell all these people why you move but you, you know you, you, you're something's happening in your life so you have two stressors usually or more like a divorce a marriage or moving changing jobs kids are going to a new school and you're moving Amplified. So you're, Right. So, you know, my friends who own restaurants always talk about like, oh, wow, they're so stressed. They're hungry. It's like, oh, yeah, you want to see stress? You got to see somebody moving like that's somebody who's really stressed. So <laughs> it was about uh, changing that whole thing up and making sure that people who are moving felt taken care of and provide good service. So and I originally got in thinking I'd only do it for a few years and we kept growing and it kept giving me new challenges. And, you know, I was used to real big, you know, corporate 500 companies and starting out with a mom and pop. It was, you know, <laughs> the gross one's really different, but every time we grow, it's a new set of challenges and interesting to me. And, you know, we've been lucky enough to, you know, do between eight to 10,000 moves a year. Every year we're in multiple states now. We've won gazillions of awards. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it, it's, it's been fun. It's a fun ride. So what keeps you in it? All that stress? <laughs> Um, what keeps me in it? It's, it's new challenges. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to get bored. I, don't, I want new challenges all the time. I want to keep growing. I want to uh, make sure that I'm providing amazing service. And we, I mean, we've had, you know, since I've been doing this for a long time, you know, we had to go through the 2008 downturn where everybody really suffered, and that was quite, you know, whoa. Everybody remembers that. And then, um, 
then of course COVID and, uh, and then I guess, uh, you know, they say that imitation is the, uh, you know, flattery, flattery right. <laughs> but it's also a pain. So it was about cleaning up our, our uh, reputation and keeping our reputation as sparkling as it always was and not have these people ruining it for us. We'd worked long and hard as we all do for our reputation. And it's so important to protect that. What are some of the biggest challenges you face day, um, you know, face day to day? I'm really lucky that I have an amazing staff because uh, I get a lot done because I have an amazing staff. So I think that a lot of it is juggling and, um, and once you get a support system in place, you want to keep them. And so that's, that's part of, you know, a, a challenge is just keeping everybody going and, and, uh, but challenges, I think, really are, well, dealing with these, <laughs> these infringers was quite challenging. Um, we found out that there's not a lot of government assistance for you, and uh, you really need to do it yourself. And, uh, you know, I could talk a lot about that, but that, yeah. that was quite challenging. And now it's catching up from all the energy and time and hours that I had to pivot my marketing staff into like little mini researchers into... Uh, you know, back to doing what we're supposed to be doing, which is building the business, right? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, talking about these rogue movers, can you tell us more about this recent lawsuit that you guys won? Sure. Yeah, we're excited about that. Um, we think it's hopefully going to send a message for the whole entire industry that, uh, not just for us, that it's not okay to take somebody's name and pretend you're them. Just a real quick background on the lawsuit in case people don't know about it. Uh, was that we had someone in Florida who was using, our name is North Star Moving, and we also, we have federally registered trademarks on North Star Moving, North Star Moving Company, and North Star Movers, and they were using North Star Movers, and how we found out about them was that we were starting to get bad reviews, and we'd look on our Yelp or phone calls saying, hey, where's my shipment, or you guys took our money, or why'd you break all this stuff, and and we'd look into our our files and we wouldn't be able to find them. They, they were not our clients. And the first few of those, you think, well, that's weird. And then you then pretty soon you realize, oh my gosh, we've got a really big problem. And so here, here's my biggest recommendation to people um, is when you get, when you come across that is to make sure that you start getting the documentation, train the people who answer your phones and your emails that if they're running across people who are using your name, and misusing your name to get the documentation, get the bill of ladings that the other company used, get as much information as you can from those people who have been harmed by people using your name or a similar name to yours. And so that you can collect all of that because that later is going to be, and then keep really good files because that's gonna be your evidence when you go to trial or when you confront these people. So that's really important. So we had to train our staff and um, I can go through the whole thing. I don't know how you want to break it up, but yeah. uh, we were we were lucky enough that we are, you know, the judge absolutely saw that these people were nefarious and um, acting willfully. And so they, I mean, they, they even took pictures of our trucks and our guys and put them on their Yelp profile. Wow. I mean, they, they were- <laughs> No hiding it. <laughs> no hiding it, you know, it's like, yeah. And um, yeah, so we, we received the 13 million, a little more than $13 million damages and then uh, plus legal fees, which were over a million bucks. We've been awarded that and plus uh, domain name uh, squatting for which the maximum you can get there is $100,000 and the judge granted us $100,000. So it's all of those together. So we're, we're over 15 million, but um, so, yeah. Do you what? What would you like me to speak to about well, it? I, what's stopping another moving company to take, or, or you know, yeah, use someone else's name and and they're, use they're really, their SEO? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Is there really isn't um, like when we went to the Department of Transportation and we went to, you know, the Florida. Uh, <laughs> authorities and we went to everyone they basically like well you're on your own really is what they wow. told. I mean they didn't come out, come out and tell you but that's what it is so um and 
I want to back up just a tiny bit because I yeah. want to talk about how important it is to squash those people that mm -hmm. are doing that because they really can hurt you. You work hard for your reputation and you want to make sure that you protect it. And somebody, you know, it's really hard to build a good reputation and it's really easy to destroy it. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're monitoring all of your review sites, that you're, that you are absolutely replying to every single Yelp, every, you know, Google review, every Facebook review, every phone call, any, any, any letter, any, any email, make sure that you're staying on top of those. And, and one, it's great customer service. So you should be doing it for that, if nothing else, but, but in the process, you educate yourself about who's out there using your name because all of a sudden you can say, well, oh, that's not our guy. You know, like we don't have a guy named Larry who's got a purple truck. Like that's not who we are. Yeah. So, um, so I think it's important to do that. And, and you mentioned there's no, not very many resources for no. moving companies that deal with rogue movers. So, um, you know, you're mentioning how important it is to stop these people, but at the same time, you dedicated all your resources to fighting this. So, you know, yeah. when did you realize this is so bad that I have to, I have to shift my resources and, you know, stop with the marketing and now they're doing research right. on. They, I mean, the re <laughs> they tell you, you should never be, um, emotionally involved with, with your business. I, I, and, and you can't help but be when someone is, you know, th these people were preying on the elderly, they were preying on people who were not very sophisticated, and they were, you know, holding their things hostage, they were breaking things, they were taking deposits, and even if they didn't move, wouldn't give them back, they were telling them, if you want that money back, you have to remove your review, I mean, they were, they were just horrendous, and the all using my name yeah and so it became personal to me it became personal that I had worked really hard we had worked really hard to be who we are and we're proud of who we are and and for to have some fly by night whomever uh decide that they were going to wreck it for us was, was just not an option so when it was uh taking care of uh ourselves but it's also was we felt it was our duty to take care of the public. And um, the, I, I think the, the thing is, is that we started very simply with, um, you know, we, uh, we worked with, I, I you know, they, even though I'm an attorney, I'm on voluntary and active um, status. So I don't, um, you know, I don't practice. I could pay my, you know, I could easily pay 200 bucks and I'd be back practicing law, but I knew that I didn't want to represent us. I knew that it was better if I was back and that we got somebody full, you know, in front. So I found very good legal counsel and it's, it was important. So I had a team of attorneys, a team, let me stress, a team of attorneys in LA and I had a team of attorneys in Florida. So it was a lot of, a lot of legal bills um, to, to really go after these guys. So we started with a nice cease and desist. And if somebody doesn't know what a cease and desist letter is, it's um, you can have an attorney draft it for you. And basically it says, you know, you're using our name. You're not authorized to use our name. You must stop. Tell us when you're, you know, you need to stop by this state. If you don't, we may have to seek further action and further action usually is for suing you. So mm -hmm. we sent them several cease and desist letters got, they didn't stop. And so we filed, that's when we filed the lawsuit to get them to stop. But the whole process, it takes like five years. It's a long, long, grueling process. So you've got to kind of be ready to go the distance if you start it, because if you aren't going to follow through, don't even start it. Um, the other thing that you want to make sure that you have even backing up even further is that you have a name that's unique enough, like if you're, you know, that you can protect it. So yeah. you want to register your you want to register your trademarks, and you should do that right when you started your business. And if you haven't done it, do it now. So you hire a, an attorney to help you register your trademarks in your state and this any state that you're doing business in. You don't really necessarily need that, but it doesn't hurt. But make sure that you get the federally protected registered trademark, and that takes several years to get that. But it's wow. an important process, and you should start that. We. Because I was an attorney from an intellectual property attorney, we had we started our 
trademarks, you know, years ago. So it yeah. wasn't something that we needed to go run out and do. We'd already had that. But if you, I would advise everybody listening that go get your, you know, go get your trademarks protected and um, make sure that you're consistent. Like don't, uh, don't use your trademark. Don't, don't like, for example, our name is North Star Moving. So we, we don't go by North Star. Like don't, don't let your, don't have anything written, just North Star, North Star, it's North Star moving, North Star moving, mm -hmm. North Star moving, so that you really brand yourself well. Does that, yeah. I feel like I'm talking a lot, I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 I, this is all information that I knew nothing about, and I'm sure there's people who don't know how important it is to have all your, you know, all the details done, you know, just to protect yourself from this ever happening. Um, uh, I mean, we have some comments. This is a huge problem for seniors, as you mentioned. Yeah, it really is. Um, and, you know, when, when you said, like, you, you're talking about gathering evidence um, in pre preparation for going to court, do you have any specific tips? Like, um, I guess it's everything is documented you know, right. digitally, so, but anything specific? Yes, yes. So uh, make sure you keep a, a list of what I call we're the victims of the infringer, right? So you have their name, you have all their contact information, and then any documentation you can get them. And any, and then have your staff and you, if you have a phone conversation, write up notes right away, not tomorrow. They hang up the phone, write the notes because so that you that you document what they've said to you, request them to send in information. And generally, people who have been ripped off, and if they're talking to you, they want to get these guys too. So if you get them on the first call that they when they're when they're calling and they're upset because they think yeah. that you're the you're the scoundrel right um they're very much more willing to to help you right and yeah. then educate them too like here go to this board in this state and report them here's your rights here to go do this and give them links and resources on how to report them so that they can go after them themselves independently while you're going after them the other way for trademark infringement. So um, I really think gathering all of that, keeping all of that very, really well organized, and then looking for patterns in that information. Um, you, so, and then that information gives you things like the company's address, the company's for, um, license number, the, you know, a phone number that they use. And then you can research <laughs> online that address, that phone number, that name, find and then find in the state, the state's registration for that company and find out who the principals are of that company and things like that. So, yeah. And so when it comes to customers looking for credible moving companies, um, you know, what, what are some tips for, you know, the, the end customer to identify rogue movers, you know, not specific, maybe not the one that's, you know, not on your end, but um, yeah, just as an end customer looking for a moving company, that's credible. Oh, sure, that's a great question. So uh, we like to tell our anybody who's shopping with us to make sure that they check that the license number on the website, that first of all, that there is a license number on the website, that the license number matches, that they go to whatever organization has issued that license, DOT, whatever, and check that that license is the matches up that the name of the company is the same name of the company that the license is for to then check reputable review sites because what these people had done is they sent people to like really scummy websites mm. that they had made up basically and yeah. put five star reviews there but they were not they were not the big ones they were not yelp they were not google they were not you know they were facebook they were they were little tiny places but to the end user and to the less sophisticated, they look like, well, they've got 25 star reviews. <laughs> well, they got 25 star reviews because their people in their office wrote them for them. You know, <laughs> so so make sure that you're sending, you know, that that the, the, they're checking reputable sites, they're licensed, yeah. check I an mean, old-fashioned BBB. I mean, I know most people don't use the BBB anymore, but check the BBB rating, check, check all of those things before you hire somebody. And check the when that the paperwork matches the what what's on the website and what's was told to you over the phone and if the company's just answering the phone mover <laughs> that's not good 
Are there, are, you know, you talk, feel like you're talking to somebody's cell phone. That's not good. That's not the, you know, there's not enough people behind them. Yeah. I don't, check, I, check how many years people have been in business, because unfortunately what happens with rogue movers, and this is a huge problem, is that they, they basically, they're, um, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're traveling bandits is basically what they are. They, they use a name. They do it, they rip people off, they rip people off, they rip people off, things get hot, that name gets a little soured, they get you know, a few too many bad re reviews on their own Yelp profile, they close down, they move, they change the name and they do it all over again. So it's very important that a movie company has been in business for a long time because if they are this constant, constant, constant changing things over, that's, that's a red flag right there. That's a really interesting point. I don't know if that's common knowledge to people that are shopping for moving companies. So really appreciate you bringing that up. And I guess in today's digital age, uh, it's not very clear whether or not a company has been in business for a long time or not. So I guess that's something that we just have to continue to educate customers on, you know, how long they've been in business. Um, so I mean, would you say that most customers are aware of rogue mover problems or does your team <laughs> no, so does your team help to educate them or you know? and you should and we all should be. That's part of what what all of us need to do is and I and that's why I agreed to do this. Um one, I'm happy about the whole thing, so I'm happy to always talk about it. But it's not just that. I feel like we as uh, as an association and as as reputable movers, we need to teach the, the public, look at, you know, this is what to look out for. And all of our jobs should be when we talk to our, our people who are shopping and hopefully moving with us, you know, the, this, is, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to check. Here's where you need to check it. Because the more people who learn something that are gonna tell their friends, when their friend says how you find out a mover, hey, did you check them on the BBB? Did you check their license? Does their paperwork match? So they're, they're gonna help teach you teach other people too. But in the beginning, and, and it's probably the beginning is you know the next 50 years, we, we've got to uh, we've got to we've got to teach people. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing a comment. I'm showing my age with the statement, but ever since the abolishment of the Interstate Commerce Commission and the deregulation of the nation's trucking industry. There has been an ever increasing amount of road movers over the years. Also, many states public services commissions have abdicated regulation and enforcement measures against illegal movers. Hmm. Yeah, there are some states that are actually more prone for problems. Florida, which is where our friend Joseph Fol were from. Well, wow. lots of problems in Florida. I know that everybody has had, but uh, the attorney general in Florida is actually going after the same people that we went after. So they have the, those people are going to be get or they're already in a lawsuit filed by the attorney general, which of Florida, which I'm very happy about. Wow. Yeah. I mean, makes it, uh, harder to, or it makes it easier for people to start a, start a company and then, yeah, have this, have this issue happen. Um, so that's it's definitely frustrating to know that some states are just yeah, completely irregulated like that, unregulated yep. like that. Yeah. Um, uh, just to switch it, uh, switch topics really quickly, and then I'll open it up to questions from the audience. I did see there's some questions in the chat as well in the Q and A, so feel free to submit those. Um, but uh, talk about something a little lot more lighthearted, Laura. What what makes your company stand out from your competition? I think it's our dedication to service. Um, I know we, I mean, I, I always feel weird saying that to another group of movers because I'm sure you guys are all dedicated to service too, but, or you wouldn't be going to seminars like this and finding out things, right? But, um, you know, we truly believe that the customer is always right. And sometimes, even when they're wrong, they're right. And that's a very, um, I think that helps. And also just being able to uh, foresee what's happening and to make sure what's going to be what their needs are and take care of it. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, there's something that, you know, it's very old fashioned. It's a very old fashioned policy to make sure that you treat people well and to treat people like you want to be treated and treat people like they were your grandmother who was moving or that's your, um, 
you know, your, your sister and your mom and how, how would you want them to be treated? And if you can instill that in your guys, um, I think that that's really powerful that if they understand that we're not here to, to, to make a quick buck, we're here for the long run. We, what we want to do is every time we have a client, we want to convert that client to being our client forever. Hmm. And that's why I don't use the word customer. A customer to me implies a one-time transaction where it's McDonald's, you know, no, it's not McDonald's, I'm a good example because people go back there. I, you know, but, um, you know, you go in once, you get the job done and, and you know, it's wham, bam, and you're gone. And that's, that's not what we want to do. We want to make sure that our clients become our raving fans. And if you're not working every day to every day, every moment, every day, every client to turn them into a raving fan, why, what are you doing this for? And, and knowing that you're trying to turn every client into a raving fan, are there people that you say no to doing business with them because they're, you, you know that they're going to be a really picky client or sure. do you guys still do your best? We, we don't mind picky. We mind it unreasonable, but, um, but we will, but absolutely we vet our customers. That's part of the job of the client loyalty team is to make sure that they're a good fit for us. You know, we're not going to give up, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to give people the lowest price. We're not, we're not in a pricing war. We're in a service war. And, um, and there's plenty of people moving. There's plenty of it out there for all of us. If, if we all do it right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, good, good to know you guys are in a pricing war because it seems like there's <laughs> a lot of companies that are, you know, just going lower and lower and lower. Yeah, you know, but and what's and what what that tells me is that they aren't treating their people right. Their people are getting paid under the table, which is horrible, because that means that they're not earning social security. They don't have medical benefits for their people. They don't have 401ks for their people. They don't, you know, they aren't taking care of the people that are moving your clients. And if you're not taking care of them, why do you think they're gonna take care of your reputation and your clients? Mm -hmm. That's just ridiculous to me it's just yeah. people you know people yeah you really got to take care of the people who work for you. <laughs> it's a standard that you guys set for all of your company and then all your yes. clients as well yeah all my, my businesses are run that way yeah <laughs> and you know with currently hiring i mean not currently but recently hiring movers and drivers continues to be a big challenge so how does your team tackle this challenge i think uh we're lucky, or not we're lucky, we work hard at it. We've had 10 best places to work awards because, um, and I think that counts for people. They, they're interested in working for a company that cares about them. And so people are gravitated to apply for jobs where people are winning awards for, ser for taking good care of them, right? Why would they wanna go work somewhere else? Um, so, so that's good. I think also there is a shortage, so we've, we've and we decided, and I just had an article published in Entrepreneur Magazine about this, um, to actually shrink down the number of moves we did because we wouldn't, we didn't want to do. I mean, we say we said no to business because we didn't want to not live up to our high standards wow. because you can't come back from ruining your own reputation by sending a subpar team out to do something. So if we didn't have the the person power to get things done. We, we didn't write the first time and we didn't do it. And, you know, that's really hard. I mean, we all are gulping because I remember 2008 way too well when nobody was moving to say no to business. You know, that's, that's bleh, I don't want to do that. But, but on the other hand, to ruin your own reputation after you just work so hard to protect it from somebody else ruining it, that's yeah. crazy too. So you, you really, um, you really absolutely need to, uh, to pick your clients, pick your people, take good care of them. And, um, I think that the, in the end it'll take care of itself. Yeah. What a decision to, uh, you know, like I said, say no to business. And, um, I, I wonder how many other moving companies have gone that route, uh, versus continue to, contract less quality, like, you know, quality, right, not you know, strongest quality movers. Yeah. We don't hire the two guys standing on the side of the road that need a job. Yeah. You know, and if that's, you know, 
because we're, you know, we're going to stand by everything that they do. Right. And I want them a little more vetted than that and a little yeah. more trained and a little more customer oriented. And I don't want to pay for those damages and those, stuff, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we all, we all know what those problems are. So we don't pay for that. <laughs> I uh, got a question here. Congrats on the win, but is there an actual recovery of 15 million from an illegal company? How has that recovery process started? The process it's in process and because uh, it's very recent. So um, currently they are mandated to show us all of their assets and we're waiting for that. And so it's stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be a long process. Yeah. But that, that judgment uh, stays against them for at least 20 years. So maybe we won't collect it all today, but we will collect it. Yeah. Um, I'm determined. Let me just put it that way. These people, are, <laughs> they're toast. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people will be following in the journey for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, during the trial, was there one particular piece of information that tipped the result to your benefit? Oh, there was so much. <laughs> I mean, I think I think that I, I I don't know whether it was one thing. I mean, we 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 were very methodical in presenting our case. We worked hard to document everything. Um, I think just the the fact that, that the infringers were so cavalier about it hmm. was shocking to the judge. <laughs> and uh, the fact that they would put, you know, like we could say that guy in that picture's name is so-and-so and he worked such and such date. And I picked out that Pantone color that's on that biodiesel sticker. And that's not a classic biodiesel sticker. My designer morale designed that biodiesel sticker, you know, so it's like, I think a lot of it was uh, just clear. Yeah, I think I think it, you know it's little bits of everything adding up together, right? And we were easy. We were very, you know, we had the federal registrations, we had the state registrations, we had tons of documentation. So we had absolute confusion in the marketplace. You have to be able to prove that somebody is confused, and they were. They were calling us, thinking that we, they were them. That's confusion. Yeah, and. To get the triple damages you needed willfulness and we can certainly show willfulness yeah yeah and it, you know you're you're talking a lot you know dealing with rogue movers is a lot about protecting your reputation um as you you know as you started your company and you're building that reputation when did you and maybe this is kind of a tie, a question that's tied to branding, but when did you really double down on really standing behind your, your brand and your reputation? I come from marketing. I always double down on branding. That's true. <laughs> um, uh, I, when I started at Atari, Atari, there was 14 people in the marketing department at Atari and we grew to uh, be a Fortune 500 company when I was there. So wow. I'm very serious about branding and yeah. um, to the point where I drive people crazy. Um, yeah, I'm not a fun person to work for, but um, I guess, <laughs> because I really, really want to make sure that things are exactly right, precise every single time. And because it gets out once, it, it, it'll bite you forever. And um, so it, it was from the beginning, just like we've always been green. We've been a green company from the beginning because that was important to me. We've always been involved with the community because that was important to me. And I, I was creating the business that I wanted to see in the world. I, was, I wanted to see a business that was service oriented. I wanted to see a business that stood for integrity. I wanted to see a business that was green. I wanted to see a business that took care of its employees. I wanted to see you know, a business that was active in the community that has annual food drives, that, that gives back to the community, that is make-a-wishes friend, that, you know, that mm -hmm. takes on helping out company. You know, right now we're working very strongly with Mary's List who works with refugees. Wow. You know, we are dedicated to giving back because I don't know why else you make money if you're not <laughs> there to, um, to make sure that you're making a better impact in the world. Because, you know, what are you doing this for? So I love how intentional you and, you know, your company is in, in 
in the community, like you said, like you emphasize, um, I mean, with all the, you know, with all everything, all the challenges happening in the moving industry, I think it's hard for some companies to focus on being involved in the community and they're just trying to survive. So, I mean, that's really great that you guys are always keeping that, you know, top of mind. And, you know, it's very, very important to um, the company. It's important to me. And, and it turns out that it's important for everybody that works for me too, or most people who work for us, because they will come, you know, if, if you let your values known and your mission known to people that work for you and make sure that they really understand it, they'll start bringing you your ideas, right? They'll start making, they'll, their ideas will mimic yours and they will be unique and they will be able to go out and make your vision even bigger. And uh, it's really about hiring good people and empowering those people to make sure that they can make the right decisions and have the power to make those decisions mm -hmm. and feel like if they have, for here's an example, there's a woman in our CLT department who, uh, who as a child was underprivileged and never could afford glasses. And so there was a, a van that came to her neighborhood that would help kids get reading glasses and glasses. And so she said, you know, hey, I really, you know, I really, I've always thought of them and I really want to help them. And I'm wow. like, great, they're our charity then. Now let, let's figure it out. Call them up, figure out like, how can we get involved with them? Let's, let's make a difference with them. And, and I think, so then people start coming to you. Hey, you know, I have family in such and such country and there's a tsunami there. Can we send, can we have a clothing drive? Yes. You know, so, the, so, and then guess what? They want to work with you. Yeah, because because you're supporting what they care about. It's Everyone's so, heard. Yeah. Wow. Um, no, I, I that's definitely I, I think a, very unique to your company, or maybe it's I, I need to ask around some more. But I love that you're really encouraging of people to speak up and um, have them be involved in um, decisions like this. It's special. Yeah, it's really important. <laughs> They spend um, well, a lot of time there. I mean, even if we're working remotely, they still spend a lot of time thinking about your company. So spend a lot of time thinking about them too. Yeah. Care about your people. Yeah, exactly. Well, Laura, I do want to wrap things up. Um, thank you so much for okay. sharing your experience sure. with Road Movers with, with all of us. Um, it's very fascinating to get insight into the whole situation and you know to know that it's so an ongoing journey. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely here to support if we can. <laughs> um, yeah, very much appreciate your time. And once again, this live Q&A was brought to you by Supermove. Um, we're bringing your whole moving company to one system and make it as easy as possible to run your business. And if you're not using any moving software, I'd love to speak with you. Um, or if you're curious to see how we can help you level up, you can check out the Supermove website and mention that you attended this live Q&A with Laura. Uh, Laura, do you have any last words? No, did we get everybody's questions answered? That, <laughs> I think so. I, I, don't, I haven't looked in the chat. I was I was hoping you were doing that. So yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I was definitely okay. doing that. All right. As long as we did that, I hate when people yeah. like oh, yeah. a lot of I mean a lot of positive comments. Um oh, good. and you know, people okay. that that can can relate. So yeah. you know, thank you so much for everything. Thank you all for attending and look out yeah. for our next live QA by following Supermove on social media. Thanks thank you so much, Laura. Thank you.